How's it going? This is Spencer Kim with Foundation Drum Academy and today we are talking about my four favorite metronome hacks. When I say hacks, I mean that these are not self-explanatory or things that people would naturally just stumble upon. These are tricks that I learned way after starting that completely transformed my ability to keep time comfortably, which was a struggle for me or maybe even a insecurity. And I don't know if that's the way you feel, but these four metronome hacks will really help you develop solid time. So before we dive in, I wanna invite you to download a free cheat sheet that we have on the website, which is foundationdrum.com slash chart. And what this is, is a chart maker to learn songs really quickly within minutes from start to finish. It really changed the game for me. So I'm excited to share that with you. And it comes with a video that explains how to use it. All right, so I think of timekeeping in a couple different ways. The first one is general keeping steady tempo throughout a song, not fluctuating, rushing throughout the song without meaning to, and not dragging without meaning to. Now there are times where things will naturally fluctuate if the band is not playing with a click. That's not a big deal if it feels right and if the energy is being matched by the band. But if it's not intended, and it's out of the drummer's control because they can't keep the time steady, that's a problem. So I think of it like one is keeping steady tempo, the other is more like precise timing, like locking in those notes exactly where they need to be and having control over just the precision and like the milliseconds between pushing the beat or dragging it or nailing it right on the money. So the first one, deals with keeping steady tempo. And this really helped me with keeping steady tempo. So I'm using Pro Metronome, it's a free app. I'm gonna turn on the click at 93. Sounds like that. So if I was to just play along, like we naturally might, two, three, four. That's fine and dandy, and that's really gonna help to be able to lock in with a click. There is absolutely value in that. But what we're going to do is mute beats two, three, and four so that we only have beat one, which is a whole note. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. It's gonna be much harder, obviously. But the, the big difference between playing with a quarter note metronome or eighths or sixteenths, when you're doing that, you're locking into something that is already there. But when you only have whole notes, it forces you to generate the time. And that's the game changer, is generating your own tempo. And doing this forces you to do that. So that's why it's so helpful. All right, the next two deal with more precise timing. And this first one, we're gonna leave out all the accents. I have the metronome at 85. And what we're doing is we're feeling these clicks on the upbeat. And, 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 and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two. So that takes a little getting used to, just kind of like turning your brain around. One, two, three, and four. Try that at different tempos. Try way slower and way faster and see if you can keep it locked in. The next one is the same idea, keeping our, our beat really steady, but this one is a little trickier because we're shifting the click to either the E's or the U's. One E and a, two E and a. Keep in mind, you can do this with swung rhythms as well, which makes it even more difficult. But I'm gonna put the metronome to 75. I'm just gonna do it on the U's. So when you're feeling this, you're gonna need to start off with playing 16th, and then you're gonna need to start counting uh, uh, 
a one, a two, a three, a four. That's a, another weird one to get used to. And then you can start accenting, accenting the downbeats. Sorry, I'm multitasking. A uh, one, a uh, two, a uh, three, a uh, four. If it's simpler, you can start with sixteenths. A uh, one. Uh, two, uh, three, and even access those clicks. And then you could just play an eighth groove and hit the kicks on the uhs. See if you can get to the point where you can mess around and not get lost. All right, so the last one is a little different. We're talking about using the metronome to practice setup fills. And if you don't know what a setup fill, it basically means a fill that is ending on anything other than beat one. And usually that's with an orchestrated band hit, like the band is hitting the end of one. And I'll demonstrate on the end of one. I have the metronome at 100. I'm just gonna keep all the quarter notes in there. So everything we're hearing is gonna be the ends. So what you can do is, since it's the end of one we're hitting with the accent, I'm just gonna start counting two after I hear that click. And, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, and four. That's the idea. Choose any spot you want to use it. And if you want to do an E or an uh, then you'll have to figure out how to shift that and start counting. If it's on the uh, then you would start counting the number right after it. And then if it's on the, the E, then you'd start counting the and right after it. So those are my four favorite metronome hacks. I incorporate those into my practice as often as possible because they are such a help and they really keep my time in check. So I hope those really benefit you. I wanna know if you have any metronome hacks of your own, anything that's helped you along the way, please leave those in the comments below and I'll check them out. If you've gotten anything out of this video, please share it with a friend, like and subscribe. And thanks so much for joining us and remember to check out the free downloadable cheat sheet at foundationdrum.com charts. And we'll see you on the next one.